What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good, Mo? Ain't nothing, my G. Would it do? My bad on being my bad on being late, everybody. It's, oh, it's, it's all good. Everybody really just pulling up right now when you walked in anyway. So okay, okay, okay. <laughs> season four. Damn, they done skip skip season three. Yeah, skip season three, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, real quick, I just want to, you know, let the people know who you are. Um, we'll do a quick little introduction, and then I'm going to get into because I got a lot of questions from a lot of different people. Oh, y'all y'all going to try, try to grill me tonight, huh? Yeah, and I got, yo, guys, you guys can write the questions in the comments. You guys can write me in my DM. I got another phone if you don't want to be, you know, if you want to be anonymous. I'm checking the DM, and I'm going to ask the questions as they come. Try not to be repetitive. If somebody already said something, we're not going to keep repeating the same, you know, questions and answers. Um, real quick, I'm Ace General, a.k.a. Mr. News with Ace, a.k.a. Came from Money and Violence. I just want to thank all y'all for tapping in. A.k.a. Nana Woods Napoleon. A.k.a. Nana Woods Napoleon, Mr. You know, News with Ace. Um, thanks for tapping in. And go ahead, Mo. The floor is yours. Hey, what's good, everyone? Um, My name is Moses Verno, a.k.a. Rafe. Uh... Creator, Money of Violence, writer, uh, writer of Godfather Harlem, um, The Spot, also did American Gods, amongst other things. Um, and I'm just uh, a man that's out here basically trying to help the world understand, you know, life through our eyes, um, give the world a better understanding of us as a whole, because a lot of times when I see uh, us as far as, you know, these guys from our neighborhoods depicted on television. I don't think that it's an authentic depiction. Um, a lot of times we're depicted as if, you know, we do the things that we do out of enjoyment. When the truth is, if we had the opportunity, we'd be doing almost anything else. So um, I just try to give people a look at us from a different, more realistic uh, perception. All right, yeah, I heard that. Um, I'm gonna get right into the, the, the question. The first question is, and guys, I need you guys to listen because there's certain things you guys might, might not know and I don't want you to ask them the same questions. But the first question, uh, you just mentioned it. How did you get the Godfather Harlem and American Gods opportunities? Um, okay, so Godfather Harlem, let's start with Godfather Harlem first. Godfather Harlem came about because, you know, I mean, Ace, you know this, for about two years, money and violence was in development with stars because we were supposed to be the next show up um, after power. So for two years, I was literally in LA every other month for a month. You remember that, Ace, because a lot of, you know, you came out there a couple of times mm -hmm. to chill with me or whatever. Um, and mm -hmm. I was out there developing the show, right? Uh, stars had paired me up with this great writer by the name of um, Charles Chick Egley. Chick had been writing television for 40 years, you know, um, he was one of the dudes that helped create The Walking Dead, The Shield, uh, Dexter, a lot of different movies. So a lot of different shows, television shows. So because, money, you know, Money and Violence, the writing was something that I literally woke up one day and decided to do. They wanted to pair me up with a more experienced writer that could really help me learn the structure and the format for television. Now, with me and Chick being in the in the writer's room, we would be in the writer's room. Like I'd be in LA for a month. Me and Chick would literally be in, our, in the writer's room Monday through Friday from 10 to five, you know? So a lot of times Chick would have writer friends of his come by, you know, rest in peace to, um, to my guy, Paul Eckstein, who died a couple of few, a few months ago. Um, Paul came by, you know, a couple of times and me, me and Paul formed a relationship. So Paul is actually one of the executive producers and the co-creators of Godfather Harlem. And he's also a close friend of um, Chris Broncado. Chris Broncado is the creator of Narcos. He's the dude that created Hoodlum, created and wrote Hoodlum. Um, he's also one of the co-creators of Godfather Harlem. So when they were putting together the writer's room for that show, you know, Paul had mentioned to Chris in the past what I had done with Money and Violence. And, you know, he was looking, he said he had a great team of writers and he was just looking for someone who had the life experience of knowing people like these characters mm -hmm. to help them write it from a more authentic perspective. So, you know, Paul had reached out to me and was like, yo, Chris is interested in have in bringing you on board. We had a Zoom call, you know, had a great conversation and um, the rest is history. And uh, with American Gods, 
my guy Charles Chick Egley, who was the same guy that they paired me up, Stars paired me up with. Um, he was my showrunner when we were developing Money and Violence for Stars. He was actually the showrunner of Godfather of um of American Gods, uh, for the third season, and he had reached out to me, and you know, and um he gave me an opportunity. So, I just want to say uh thank you to Chris Broncado, thank you to Paul Eckstein, also thank you to my guy Marquand Smith. You know, Marquand is also one of the co-creators. Um, it took him 18 years to pretty much get Godfather of Harlem picked up. And um, mm -hmm. when Chris brought the idea of me coming on board to him, you know, he had already heard heard of what I had done before. And, um, you know, he gave he gave me his blessing to Chris. Um, um, how long do you think, well, you would know, how long is it from the start of writing to the end where it's completed to hand out over to production? How long are you in the writer's <laughs> room? Are you back and forth? All right, well, let, let me put you on to something. This is, this is like a thing that we always say in the writer's room. No script is ever finished. It's simply abandoned at some point in time. Because the truth is you're rewriting up until the day of production a lot of times. You know, mm. it's like art. You know, no piece of art is ever completed it's always simply abandoned and it's because if you if you look at it long enough you can you'll always see something that you think that you could tweak and and the truth is if you're trying to get it perfect you're never going to finish your script you there just has to be a point where you just say and i hate to use the words good enough but there, there just has to be a point where you see that if you see the picture that you're trying to make the people see you just got to put it out there because if not writing is never completed you know um, when I watch Money and Violence to this day, there are scenes where I'm like, damn, I could have did this better here. I could have did it better there. <laughs> you understand? And that's never going to change. You know, you're, you're never, you're never going to create a perfect piece of art. Agreed. Hold on one second. We got a, we got a guest real quick and we're going to get back to the questions. Let me see if it'll, it'll let him up here. I just accepted it. To the mother effing shizay. Oh, my guy, Shooter Shane is in the building. What's up? Mo Ace, what's up, man? Dude was good, my G. Chilling, chilling, chilling. What's going on with y'all? Ain't nothing, man. With that with that with that hat to the back, you look like the old shooter Shane, bro. <laughs> ah, <man. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yo, um yo, real quick, dude, you jumped in right right in time. I do have some questions from you people was asking, man. Like what, what what's good with Shooter Shane? Where's Shooter Shane at? That's what they want to know. Well, uh what happened is is daddy duties actually. Uh you know, <laughs> family family came and we doing what everything gotta do. But um I'm still here. Still around. I'm still, I'm still around. All you do, I'm always one phone call away. You know how that go. No right, always, always, man. Appreciate that. Um, real quick, while we have you here, um, dude, um, what, what, what is your favorite character? Who was your favorite character on Money and Violence? Yo, we shoot the shame one. It cut him off. Yeah. It's still, he's still showing on my end. He's he's not on your screen nah, anymore. I don't see him. All right. It might. Hold on one second. Let me see. Yeah, it cut him off. It's still showing a blank screen of mine. He probably gonna try to add it back. Yeah, yo, dude, but jump yeah. back on. Um, all right, while we wait for Duke, now you talk about the writing of American Gods. We talk about Godfather Harlem. Those are both on television. Um, but after Money and Violence, you wrote another show called mm -hmm. The Spot. Mm -hmm. What is that about? For those that don't know, what is that about? Um so all right so first of all like like the 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 log line for the spot was um it takes for you to get to the top for you to realize how close it is to the bottom right mm -hmm. and um it, it's so crazy because once again you know all of my writing is uh inspired by my, my experiences you know what i mean and mm -hmm. the, the spot is actually drawn from a time that was you know kind of some struggles that a time of struggle that I went through in my life. Um, and the spot is pretty much this dude who was doing pretty well for himself on the streets. And he, uh, you know, got himself a nice place, downtown Brooklyn, nice little penthouse. And he takes this huge loss, right? Yeah. Um, he takes this huge loss and he pretty much loses everything. And the, the spot is pretty much his climb up the treacherous ladder 
to the trying to get back to the top uh, while trying to figure out where that big loss came from and who of those closest to him he can trust. But you the so, Shane now, and his Bizak. Yeah, yeah. So real quick, before before we get back to your questions, Mo, since you know Shane. Yeah, is yeah, on yeah, the yeah, yeah. Let's keep my guy. Shane, who was your favorite character on Money and Violence? Um it might it might be it might be uh Leon. Leon? Yeah, it's either Leon. Yep. Or Leon. I had I, I was kind of stuck because it's it's Leon, but I really like Chopper Zoe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Chopper Zoe. Okay, Chopper be doing his thing. And, Chop should um, be patching in soon too. And the funny thing is, y'all gonna hate this part, but it, it's Ty. Ty. Yeah, of course. Ty yes. Of course. Of yeah. course. Ty yeah. did that role. He did that role very yeah. well. Yeah, and on the lowest BR also. So I'm gonna leave it at there. I'm not gonna say no more. That's about it. <laughs> Yo, you like every single yeah. character, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, it, it, it was, you know, it, it's a difference when you when you're shooting it, you're making it, and you're rewatching it now. And rewatching it, it just makes you appreciate everything we went through making this. Yeah. Especially season so, one. So for the fans, you know, we, we talk about it a lot of times. Um the hard work we put in to give them this money and violence season one, season two. Is there a moment that stands out for you where it's like, damn, yo, we really putting our all into this? Yeah. Yeah, it's a moment. Look, what? The whole <laughs> my bad. It's it's hard. It's hard to explain this uh for those that don't know. All right, I could I simple it up like this. We had guerrilla style learning with everything. Like we didn't know how to use a camera, we didn't know how to use a mic, and we damn sure didn't know how to act. We didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't uh, only thing we knew how to do was read and argue with Mo saying that we're doing it right and he's saying we're doing it wrong and then like, <laughs> we gotta do the way he the way he visioned it because it's his vision. But a lot of people don't know we got the script. Sometimes we got the script probably seven, eight minutes before we actually filmed it. So it wasn't it Hold wasn't on, not to cut you off, dude. I'm gonna post probably I'll do it tomorrow because I have a behind the scenes clip of us literally sitting in the lobby for like, remember before we did BR and G scene at, in the phone I, store? You wrote the, screen, you wrote the I, script there. I wrote the script in the lobby, but it was raining and we didn't have a location to go yeah. shoot. And and Z-Quay was like, yo, I got to do it with a phone store. <laughs> Y'all yep. want to shoot there? Yeah, yep. we yeah but go ahead, go ahead, we went, dude. We went to the phone store that day and got high as hell in the phone store and I don't even smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I know one thing. Uh, I appreciate the fact that how, how we did it because now I'm able to go anywhere and be able to do it right then and there without no hesitation or anything. Um, I do want to say a few things. I know I never come out and, you know, speak. speak. I can't hear you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, nah, somebody tried to call me. Yeah, one thing is... Um, a lot of people be lying. Uh, I don't. I don't really. Nah. Um, yo, let's 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 no, listen. Let's not. The, let's. Not, yo, dude. Let's not. To, dude. Dude. Let's not even touch on that. Cause. Cause. Don't even touch on it. I don't even want to touch on that. And the reason being is because lies don't change reality. That's you know, exactly. where I'm coming from. That's so. Let's not. Let's not breathe life into what we want to die. So let that be, bro. Oh shit. Let that be. Yeah. Because Yo, listen, don't, listen. Because don't, there's don't nothing. There's nothing. That, the wait, wait, hold on. There's nothing that a man's going to say that's going to change my history of who I am. You understand where I'm coming from? Like oh, I, people can create whatever I, they I, want to create. Yeah, I, I was. I wasn't even about to get into that part. I was just going to get into how uh, a lot of these people out here lying, saying things that that really ain't true. And I'm not talking about what, whatever whatever they had going on and the conversations. No, that's corny. I don't. I don't. I don't even interact with none of that. That's why you'll never ever hear me even speak about it like i just let it go because what's the purpose yo, yo look this is a very this is a very dope dynamic like mo said we letting that rock but yeah you see yeah yo stay right here because i'm gonna get... I just want to um i just want to interject with one thing i saw somebody ask if um mister was based on the westminster road bully now mister from what mister wasn't from westminster mister was from argyle road which is which is the block I grew up on, right around the corner from Westminster. You know, I, I knew Mister since we was kids. That's my man. Actually, Mister's doing twenty five right now. I spoke to doing twenty five right now. I spoke to Mister probably about two weeks ago. He called me from jail. Um, the character Mister isn't based on Mister, but it's inspired 
to a degree by Mr. Because I just thought when I was making the show, I was like, yo, it would be hilarious to see a grown ass man calling another man Mr. You mm -hmm. understand what I mean? And the fact that, yeah, yo, Mr. was like the biggest bully in Flatbush. <laughs> you understand? So, so the Mr. character isn't based on Mr. Like, 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 totally, but he definitely was an inspiration for the character, you know, because my man Mr. never used to say respect your jaw or nothing like that, but as little as Mr. was, like, Mr. was the knockout king. You understand what I'm saying? Shout out to my dude, Mr. Man, um, behind that wall. So, real quick, dude, don't leave. Like, two two questions for Mo, and then it's going to trickle into another question for you, all right? So, Mo, we spoke about the spot before dude came in. Yeah. What made you decide, for those that didn't see the spot, what made you decide to shoot a whole series in one location? Okay, so this is the thing. The spot came out in, I believe it came out in 2019, right? Um, December 2018, I basically had the meeting with Stars because like I told you, we were in development with Stars for two years. Money and violence were supposed to go on Stars. I got the call from them in December that they had chose to go into, a, they had chose to go a different direction. They chose to go with, you know, the sequels for Power, like Power Book 2 and all of that stuff. So when they told me that and they were like, yo, we'll still, still do money and violence if you're willing to wait five to six years. And I was like, nah, I don't want to do all of that. When I got that call, instead of letting it discourage me, what I said to myself was, yo, I'm going to use this fuel to push me to shoot another show. That, that was in December of 2018. I started writing the spot January, I remember, New Year's. January 2019. I wrote the entire season in 60 days. I wrote the entire season January, February, and we began, I think we began shooting the show in March. Um, why did I shoot it in one location? It was because it was winter. You remember what we went through with Money and Violence? Yes. And I hated shooting in the cold, bro. Mm -hmm. So for one, I was like, it's going to make it a lot easier to shoot if I just write a show that takes place in the crib. And then another thing too was as a writer, I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to see, can I keep a story moving in one location? It was, some, it was a challenge I really wanted to give myself as a writer. Um, and that's why, that's why I was in one location. All right, this was a fan question that ties into this question. Will there be a spot too? Cause you, there's people that love money and violence, but those that love money and violence, I'm telling you, there's a fan oh, yeah. base for the spot. If yeah, you haven't watched the spot, Definitely. They be on my back about it. And I'm like, yo, bro, I ain't the writer. No, but... they, listen, look, and I need y'all to understand this. People think that I have this thing for not finishing the things I create. And that's not what it is. What y'all have to understand is, yo, it takes money to produce these shows. You understand? And when you're basically doing it out of your pocket, right? And then you have the fact that I have a lot of people, right, who believe you know um shout out to ace shout out to the dude shout out to chopper shout out to my guy phil to demi shout out to um junior side my man cyrus uh shout out to bucks to fritz shout out to strife you know and a lot of these people when i chose to do these shows man gave me hours and hours and hours of their time you mm -hmm. understand um basically on the arm and i'm just at the point where I want to get situations so that these same people that believed in me and helped me do these projects on pure passion with no money, I can have a situation where I can say, yo, this time we getting paid for it. You know, because another thing too, what's going on as of the last seven years, I learned a lot from, man. Because I get DMs from people all the time that are like, yo, give me an opportunity. I want to act, I'll do it for free. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'll be a cameraman for free, blah, 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 this, this, this. And not saying that these people aren't being honest, right? But I've sat and watched people who said, yo, I believe, and let's do this. All of a sudden, when it started getting light, pretend as if I just didn't want to pay them, bro. For a show, mm, a show that never had a budget. Facts. That's 100% facts. Um, somebody, somebody asked a question on there, but I'm going to get to that. I've seen it. Um, we also, hold on, sorry. We also got another series that you wrote outside of the spot, but it's only one episode out now. Black. It's called Black. Can you tell Black. us about that? I'm dying to finish that show. Um, Black, 
it's an acronym. It stands for betrayal and loyalty, all for control of the kingdom, right? And um, it's funny you ask, because I actually just, I just wrote a log line for Black. Uh, uh, hold, hold, hold that thought one second, Mo. We got another, another visitor sure. real fast. Real quick, hold that thought. Who that, Chop? Cheers up. Chop up. What it do? What it do, y'all? Call, yeah. Call me Chopper, Jay. Huh? <laughs> Call me Chopper, Jay. <laughs> Call me Chopper, Jay. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, cool. Chopper, I know you you driving and stuff, so we're going to get right into questions for you. Nah, quick. nah. You, I'm you good. Sure. I'm going home. I'm on my way home. I'll be home in like three minutes, man. Chill out. I'll be good. All right, so yo, all right, so, so you, you want you want to patch back in when you get to the crib, Chuck? All right, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll patch back in in five minutes. All right, so patch back in with us when you get to the crib. Let's chop all it. Right, gotcha. Bet. All right, baby. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys, real quick, quick commercial break. Make sure you guys follow Muse with Ace, Ace General. Thank you very much. Oh, my boy. <laughs> we got an ad. Okay. Yo, all right. <laughs> well, let me let me react to the question for those that's just coming in. We just spoke about your other work, the spot. Now we're talking about this series called Black that you have, but there's only one episode out. Why isn't it done? Can you tell us more about it? All right. Um. Once again, Black. Uh, it's an acronym. It stands for Betrayal and Loyalty, all for Control of the Kingdom. Um. And um, what Black is? It's an examination on the difference between Black and White crime. Um, the log line, I saw somebody uh, write, what is a log line? A log line is something that in the film industry that is required. You know, a lot of times when you see like these shows um, on Netflix, when you see the poster mm -hmm. or any service, you'll see that one or two line summary of what that show is about. That's what a log line is about. So the log line for, for, for Black is actually an underhanded Black gangster learns the benefit of organization and unity and must win back the trust of all those he's burned in hopes of unifying the streets of Brooklyn to form his own organized syndicate named Black. So, oh. yeah, so, so, so Black is pretty much, the reason I wrote Black is because um, I feel that we're a lot stronger together than we are apart. So it's pretty much a story of this Black gangster dude, his name is Bats, I play Bats, and um, he's running through Brooklyn, just basically crossing everybody, you know? Yeah. He's um, burning bridges, he's, he's a snake, he's being grimy, he's robbing dudes, he's doing this, <laughs> he's doing that. But then he starts doing business with this uh, Russian crime boss. And um, he, he basically steals from the Russian crime boss because one thing I always hate is that in a lot of these shows, you got these uh, Black characters who are so ruthless, right, when they're in the Black neighborhood. But once they start messing with the white boss, they're afraid of him. But Bats is different. He didn't give a damn about the white boss. Like, he basically robs the white boss. The white boss sends some guys after him to kill him. Bats ends up killing them. Then he goes after the white um, gangster. He basically gets to the point where he's about to kill him. And the guy is telling him, like, this is why I don't mess with you, with you, you know, with you Negroes. Um, because y'all don't understand the importance of longevity, right? Like we could have got money forever, but for this little bit of money, like you snaked me. So with him saying that, it makes Bat stink. He just go and they continue to do business. And through doing business with dude, he learns the beauty of organization, unity, you know, not being underhanded, living by codes. And um, after that, now he has to backtrack through Brooklyn and pretty much win the, the trust of all these guys who he's burned um, to form his own organized syndicate called Black. And my man, my man Shooter Shane is in there also. He's uh he's lucky and he's my yeah, adversary. That's, that's the question. So that's the question I was gonna get into. Um Shooter Shane, do dollars. Um you're in the you're in the show Black too, the first yeah. episode. How how was it being Shooter Shane and tell them about the character you are in Black, like the difference? All right, well, Shooter Shane is different. See, a lot of people talking about Shooter Shane, pop this, pop that, Shooter Shane don't play. I don't think none of y'all really realize Shooter Shane ain't never started nothing throughout the whole series except that one time when he had to give Miz that money. Yeah. Other, <laughs> everything happened to him. He was, see, we was, everybody was just trying to live another day. And money 
That's what we was doing. Now in black, oh, I'm over here with all. Uh, he said Mo was kicking that dude for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say, yeah. I'm over, I'm, at, so far, that was my favorite. That was my favorite uh, scene that we did so far, too, because when when Mo, when, when Mo was uh, manhandling him on the side of that car, uh, <laughs> I had to put on a, a, a face of, you know, what the hell is really going on here like it was supposed to be he's supposed to just save me but now he's beating the blood out of him and i gotta be like the whole time and i, I love the fact that you know most of the times you do it you do it how you do it but mo helps you out you know almost a hundred percent of the time when you need it to get his his point of view across the way he want to do it. i don't see it's no difference because it's, i'm still too urban black kid urban black mm -hmm. dude from the neighborhood just trying to mm -hmm. get it how i get it i love, I love that I love that. Um, so real quick, back to Mo. Don't go in the way yet, dude. I still got questions for you from fans. Um, fans. So we have we have a season three of Money and Violence. I mean, we have no season three of Money and Violence. We have no season two of the spot, and no continuation of Black. Do you love to play games <laughs> with your supporters' emotions? <laughs> nah, listen, man. I actually don't love to play games with my supporters. And trust me, man, I'd be wanting to produce these shows even more than y'all do. But y'all have to understand, Money and Violence. We put out season one because it didn't have a resume. So I wanted to create a body of work to show the world what it is that I could do. You understand? It's just like, you know, when, when you're a teenager and you have no work experience, right? You take on an internship and you're willing to work for free. Why? Because nobody knows what you're capable of. But through that internship, you learn work experience. But now, after having years of work experience, you're not trying to go work at nobody's job for free. You know what I mean? Because now... The people are more than aware of what you can do. And it's the same thing with me. Like, at the end of the day, you know, we put out seven months of production for the first season of Money and Violence. 25 episodes. Uh, I'd say I think 11, hours, 11, hours, 11 hours of content that we put out for free. Bro, you're being uh, modest. Because we shot a whole year and only had one episode of shit. Mm. Nah, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm talking about once we got started. I'm still I'm talking about once we got started. Once we started putting out episodes, that was seven months. You know, um and we put out this body of work to show the world what we can do. You understand? And we appreciate the love and support that we got, you know, from that body of work. But I think it's kind of unfair to ask us to basically continue working for free. You understand? So for me it's all about getting getting a situation to, to 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 basically fund us continue continuing to produce more content you know this is why i said with this 2b re-release the goal is get us the number one on 2b because once we're number one on 2b then um it'll put us in position and it'll give us leverage so that people can approach us like yo we see what y'all are doing let me give y'all a situation to produce more of y'all content and i seen somebody say donations right i hear you I'm not mad at the at, at 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 the crowdfunding, right? But if I have to be honest with you, dealing with our demographic, bro, when we did that crowdfunding campaign, I can't tell you how many times we dealt with being called bum ass niggas. You know? <laughs> even though the Hold people on. were asking Hold. for were asking for Hold. the content, the fact that we asked them to even donate a dollar for it, like the reaction we got, it was off putting. You understand? Um, and still to this day. I have people coming under my post talking about, oh, I donated and we never got nothing for it. And it's like, what are you talking? Even though I know the people that say stuff like that are people that didn't even donate. Because everybody that donated knows that, you know, we 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 delivered on our promise. We gave the season two that we said we would give from the crowdfunding campaign. So um, real quick, we're gonna get right back to you, Mo. Um, we got Chopper Zone in the building, Chopper Zone. Introduce yourself to the people, let them know who you are. For those that don't know, uh, Chopper Zoe, call me Chopper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> goddamn it, we yeah. You Actor know. slash rapper extraordinaire. Rapper, Yo, um, all that, all that. I want I want to get into a little history with you real quick, Chopper. Before Money and Violence, you was Chopper Zoe, right? Yeah. You came on there as Chopper Zoe. How did you get involved with Money and Violence? Um, what's crazy is uh. My bro I'm, 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 I credit my brother because my brother Vegas and Mo, cool. You know what I'm saying? Them boys like grew up, like grew up with each other. And um, I was doing my thing. I, I was actually running around with Y Clef at the time. And Mo, most people don't know, like Cloud Nine, 
used to really like do, do parties, um, interviews, stuff like that. I don't know, if, you know, that's just the history. And um, Mo and my brother got connected, and Mo was like, "Yo, you fuck with my music, shit like that." So them boys came to the Bronx. Yeah, it was, and, it was me. Um, it was me doing A's. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, you know who them mean? boys you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and we, You covering your mic. You covering your you mic. Covering your mic. You covering your mic, Chop. We can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Yeah. So, so you yeah. yeah. You went out again. You cover you covering your mic. You covering your mic. Yeah, you covering you covering your mic when you talk, so we can't hear you. No, we can hear now you. Now we can every time okay. you talk, I think you're covering the mic. Okay, okay. But yeah, so um so Mo showed me the trailer and I was I remember sitting there like, oh shit, yo Mo, this shit look like it's it could be something. And he asked me to be in it. And I was like, like, look, I ain't trying to take credit for nothing, <laughs> nothing like that. But I remember telling Mo, I said, yo, Mo, if you do it, drop it, try, try to drop it every week. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that, Mo. I, I remember it. I said, yo, try to drop it every week. Cause if you do that, you're gonna like niggas gonna be looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I didn't know the nigga was gonna actually do it. You know <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the nigga was actually gonna do it, but he started dropping it every week, and it got to the point where I forgot I shot money and violence. I would I would be walking in the street because if you look, I was in season three. I mean, I was in season one, episode three, but I wasn't in something again until like episode fifteen. Till the finale, you wasn't. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. before the like finale, the, you the, and Shay. The, the, the scene with me and Shay in the car. Fight. Shay, you and Shay, yeah. You feel me? So it was months since I shot. I forgot that I even shot a show. It's not until people <laughs> in the streets started coming up to me like, "Yo, that's that nigga from," and I'm like, "What the fuck these niggas talking about?" And that's when it hit me like, "Oh shit, the show, the thing I did is blowing up." You know what I mean? So, but yeah, man, that's that's how I got on the show. More, more history with my brother. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I wanna. I'm asking everybody this: Who's it, who's your favorite character on Money Violence? Me personally. Yeah. Or you, Kane. Oh what? Kane is, <laughs> oh shit! Kane is, my, Kane is my Kane is my personal favorite, and um, and I'm gonna be real shooter Shane too. The reason why is because them boys were like, they, like Mo, your writing is so like realistic. I know niggas like Kane and Shane. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, good heart niggas try to do, do do try to do right by everybody. You know what I mean? I see I see a Kane every single day, baby mama drama. You get what I'm saying? But to watch how Kane grew and and I remember the first time Kane and went and asked Ray for a gun. You know, that that mm -hmm. was a real real conversation when you told him like, "Yo, and Shooter Shane. Shooter Shane told him too. Shooter Shane was like, yeah, like Yo, nah. you, can't, you can't pull out a blick and not really be ready to use it. So that's why I, Kane is my favorite character because I watch Kane grow. And, 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 and yo, Ace, you really killed that role, bro. You went from like this bitch nigga <laughs> to a real nigga. Yo, <laughs> yo, Chop. Yo, Chop, you know what I always say? I got so much gratitude for Ace because nobody would have played that role nobody hundred and fifty percent even when first season one giving the piggyback ride letting Mr. Herb him Yo, bro. Ace gave his hundred and ten percent bro did. and did, I appreciate bro. him so much for it. He did. he did he did he did appreciate that appreciate that yeah so Chopper <laughs> after money and violence you know you're still Chopper Zoe Money and violence is big. You've worked on a couple of things after. Can you tell the people other things that you have worked on, music related or acting related? I'm a movie star now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a movie star. <laughs> no, for real. Cause um I did a film with Isaiah Washington, um, Stephen Bishop. It, it was a it was a a, a big film by uh, Viacom. You know, it was a multi million dollar film. Um what's crazy though, know, season two had me prepared for it though because season two was a real set season mm -hmm. two was a real set you know what i mean so i knew what to expect and shit like that but yeah i did sister's keeper that's on tubi and um amazon prime and then uh the the, the keys to the city movie that's on uh showtime and bet right now you know what i mean so yeah i've, I've done a few other things after money and violence and my god I, I, I got a distribution deal with jim jones right now as far as my music Hey, 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 hey,
yeah. that's what I like to hear. That's yeah, what I so, like so, to you know, hear. I'm and Jones, Jones building a roster over there. I ain't gonna lie, bro. This is nice. I feel like Dice Peso. I, I salute Jones because I feel like he's grabbing all the under. My man King Street giving him that light. Nah, yeah, nah, King, nah, King, yo, King going crazy. He, yo, right now. Nah, listen, going King, yo, King, and I took you know what? I saw King last week. Um, my man uh King of Long Island had a birthday party I slid through. So I think Jim Jones, I think he was hosting or whatever. He slid through, but I saw King there. And I was telling King, I said, I see you. You ain't playing. You was waiting for that opportunity. The minute they put that ball in your head, yo, you still go. Yo, yo, bro, that that man right there, like, you you, you ever like you ever see somebody do something you do and it make you want to do it better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's King. Yeah. When I hear King, and I'm a nigga with bars, I freestyle off the top. But when I hear bro, he make me step my yeah, not, up. Straight I can't up. go in, bro. Listen, he's, my he's, man, King Street. Yo, listen, let me tell you something. Right? Yeah, I got. I got over 20 years with King. King For real? I know y'all been each other that long. Yo, King, King was on Money and Violence. You forgot that the dude that Ron Shane in the building. Remember, yeah, I had, I had, I had to get him back. Yeah. 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 A lot of people don't want to my shirt in real life that day, too. <laughs> when, when, but, um, when you body the motorcycle. Yeah. But, <laughs> but listen, he been doing he been doing this way like it was long overdue. Like we gonna he he deserve everything he get right now. I'm yeah. gonna leave it at that. He deserve everything he get right now. Yeah, I'm happy for that boy for real. Yeah. And he's a good he's a genuine good dude. So nah, Keen a good dude, yeah. man. Yo, Chopper, your first your first video, I wanna act in it, man. Your first video on, on the on the on the on the way out. You said what? Your first music video on the way out, I wanna act in it. Oh, Keen in here. Keen was good. Yo, Keen, Look. Keen was good, my guy. Well, I can't good. see no problem. Let's do it. I'm with you. It. There you go. That's what I wanted to hear. There you Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. For All right, Copper, you can stay right it. here. We don't got nobody else joining. I got to continue asking more some questions. Well, hurry up. Yo, mo, uh, Ace, ask the, last, ask the question you want to ask me. Right. So I go get my daughter. Strife, strife want to join in, too. Hold on. It's, it's right. one more for Mo, and then you heard me, Ace? I got yeah. you, right? You heard Is me, Look, they go keys right black, now. We were just speaking Black want to join in, too. All right, so let me just skip to do because do about to get off. Yo, so do. Yep. Um, moving forward, a fan wanted to know: Will you be one working with Money and Violence, or do they? Do you have any other projects that you're about to work on or coming out? Or are you still acting? All right. Well, one is that answer is going to be both. Uh, I don't know. Like, however, whether I'm in the whether I'm in on the camera or behind the camera, I'm still going to be involved with Money and Violence. Two, we're going to have Black. The Shane ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Two, we still got Black. Three, I got. I'm actually on four different four different shows on Tubi that I don't even know the name oh. of. Oh yeah, 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 facts, facts. I got I got facts. a bunch of I got a bunch of bunch of shows on What's like up? that. I'm I'm just sick with me, Paul. But uh, yes, yes, a general. Just to answer your question, I'm still gonna be involved with Money and Balance. I'm still gonna be involved with Money and Balance. I'm still gonna be involved with Money and Balance. Have you? I wanna look at it. Y'all, yo, listen, yo, y'all know the y'all know the slogan. The slogan is. Better we Better be broke, broke together. together than ever rich apart. I'm not going nowhere. I don't care how many miles away I am. I don't care about none of that. At the end of the day, I'm so high up, I can't hear them talking down there. So I don't Let's care go. About none of Let's that. get it. I'm here. Yo, guys, make sure you guys follow Shooter Shane, do dollars. Yo, dude, thank you, man. Thank you for coming up here. All right, my boy. All right, dude. Uh, yo, yo, Mo, yo. we just finished talking about, you know, the prolonging of finishing the project. You talked about budgets. You talked about you know how much it takes to actually make these seasons and what you're waiting for my next question right now is you worked on godfather harlem as a writer rumor has it that godfather harlem offered you a role on the show and you turned it down why okay um actually when we were developing when we were when we were when we were um, putting together the first season um chris broncado who's the showrunner i pretty much he had pretty much offered me a role like yo you know I know you're an actor too, so what's up? And I was like, eh, I didn't, I, I didn't want it. The reason I turned it down, hold in on, honesty. No, hold on, Chopper, mute your phone while you're not talking because it's a feedback. I okay. hear it like out your speaker. Hold on, but hold on. Wait, I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm, you see the microphone? Just hit the microphone. I don't see the mic. Though. You don't see oh, it. <laughs> there you nah, go. You're good. So All right. I um, you'll hear me when I right, we get yeah. back. The reason I turned it down is because um, acting isn't really my first love, bro. Like, writing is my love. You understand what I mean? And, um, I mean, Ace, you know this. I'm not a dude that really likes attention. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I saw the attention that money and violence brought me. You understand? And 
I, I just figured, yo, if I did Godfather Harlem, if I acted on Godfather Harlem, then it's like that will multiply times a thousand, bro. And I, that's not for me. You know what I mean? I like being behind the camera. I like writing. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't enjoy acting. It's just not my first love. And um, also, it's just, acting is just one extra thing for me to have to do, bro. I be juggling so many different roles. That's just one extra thing to have to do, you know, so. Okay, so um, you wrote for, I'm, I'm just going through it again because there's new people joining. You worked for Godfather of Harlem. You wrote for Godfather of Harlem. You wrote for American Gods. Mm -hmm. You wrote and created Money and Violence. You wrote and created The Spot. You wrote and created Black. What other bodies of workers? I, I need them to know whatever you feel like talking about. All right. You have an arsenal. So look. Let them know what they can expect. I'm, I'm going to be totally honest with y'all, right? Yes. I want to give y'all a season three, right? But in the same breath, it's going to take a lot, right? And the reason I'm saying it's going to take a lot, you have to understand that um, season three is about 12 hour long episodes, right? So season three definitely coming. We get the situation, we own it. But I want to give y'all a body of work as soon as possible. So what I actually just did is I, I, um, I wrote a money and vine origin film it's called uh the old brooklyn and it's about rafe at 18 years old so it's the beginning story of money and violence um and that's a feature that should be about an hour and 45 minutes long and um that's what i'm looking to bring as soon as possible uh i'm not saying it's gonna i'm not saying it's gonna be you know in the next couple of months or so but that's what i'm looking to bring as soon as possible as well as bringing y'all the season three also as well uh, I have another show that I wrote called Damaged. Um, Damaged is something that y'all really wouldn't expect from me. It's, uh, it's based on four women and um, it's based on relationships. You know, it's about that old adage. It's called Damaged because it's about the old adage that uh, hurt people hurt people and create more hurt people. Like we live in a world where, you know, everybody's dealing with trauma. Everybody's dealing with uh, trying to heal. You understand? So Damaged is about relationships and dating and these four women and the journey that they embark on um in through their dating and social life um to find their healing it's it's something that people would not expect from me at all because it's not you know it's not urban crime it's not anything like that it's literally relationships um i would compare it to a i wouldn't say a more urban but i would compare it to like a, a sex in the city you know, something like that. And that's something that um, I wrote quite some time ago that I'm looking to bring to y'all. As well as I also wrote another com uh, another feature, a comedy. Um, that's another movie that I'm looking to do. I, I got a lot of stuff written, man. Aside from, you know, I've also written two books that I hope to publish sometime in the near future. I've done a lot, you know, so hopefully this situation with Tubi puts us in position to get situations to get all of these projects done so that we could bring that straight to y'all. And an entire season of Black as well. There you go. Wow. That's a lot on your plate. Now, Mo, you wrote, you have wrote, written for television. You have written for yourself. Real quick, because there's a lot of writers in here. There's um, producers in here. There's directors in here. If there is an independent filmmaker out there that needs a writer, are you open to work with them? Or are you Hollywood Mo now? No, I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not Hollywood at all. I mean, you, you know, there's a writer who, uh, who would actually paid me to rewrite a script for him um, not too long ago. This was maybe about a year ago. I'm not Hollywood at all. You know, if you have a project that I think is worth it, then yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you got to understand that my time is worth something. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Of course. That doesn't, that doesn't come free. Um, I have another question, right? It's now you have... Money and Violence season one and two on Tubi, right? Uh -huh. Will The Spot, Black, any other your other products be on Tubi? And why did you choose Tubi out of all products? Okay, that's the plan. The plan is to get all of my content on Tubi. Um, currently, I'm working on getting Black on there, and okay. next will be next will be The Spot. The reason I chose Tubi is because, for one, it's a platform that's available on every television, on every uh, phone. It's available on every tablet. You know, it's available on every <laughs> medium so people can get access to my shows. And second of all, I chose Tubi because it's free. No one has to 
pay for a subscription. They can literally download it and watch it right there. I mean, look, man, we're living in very tough times. Everybody ain't got it. And I'm not even mad at that. You understand? So I thought Tubi was the perfect platform because it would allow everyone, even those, you know, that ain't getting it like that, to have access to these shows. Um, this is a fan question from Life underscore Lover 67. Can you share your inspiration when you develop the characters? My inspiration with developing the characters is simply the want to help the world understand us, young black men in these urban neighborhoods. You know, Kane, for instance, Kane's journey to me, the important. <laughs> there go my oh, guy Black. Don't know families. How y'all doing? <laughs> Strike. What's up? What's up, brother? Yo, everybody got kids now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Black. Strizzy, hold on one <laughs> second. But um, like Kane, for instance, Kane's journey for me was to help the world understand how a harmless young black boy put in these neighborhoods can become a monster. You understand? What you have to understand with Kane is the beauty about Kane's development, and I'm going to compare Kane to, to me to a character that I thought was a little undeveloped, which is Tariq from Power. Tariq wanted okay. to be a gangster. Kane wanted to be a gangster. Kane just kept getting put in positions that brought that out of him. You know, he doesn't have a job. Baby moms won't let him see his kid. Now he's looking for ways, you know, at the end of the day, what defines us as men is the ability to provide. The world drills that into our head. You know, a lot of people don't speak on that, right? The feelings of inadequacy that men feel when they cannot provide, bro. Like, like it literally causes a mental breakdown. You understand mm -hmm. the world doesn't speak on that. So Cain put in that position, has his back against the wall. And what he turns to is what's available to him. Right, which is what's available to most of these kids in these urban neighborhoods, which is the streets. You understand? So he puts one foot into the streets. Now, the thing about the streets is once you put one foot in, it's going to keep pulling you deeper. And that's exactly what it did to Kane. It kept putting him in positions. Now he's in a robbery where Shane is about to lose his life, right? And he has no choice. Not that he wanted to kill this man, but in order to save his friend's life, he has to react. What people don't realize with money and violence is money and violence is a bunch of characters that are doing nothing other than reacting to their environment. They are initiating these actions. They're reacting to the mm -hmm. environment. So the truth is, had they not been in these environments, Rafe, Shane, Kane, Miz, bro, they could have been Fortune 500 CEOs. But because you place them in this environment and they have this will to, this, to survive and this ambition and this determination to provide for their loved ones, it's like by any means necessary, my loved ones will not starve. That's a fact. Yeah. Real quick, Mo, hold on, because we got Black on the line. Let me get a couple questions in for Black. Black. What's up, family? My God, Stripe. What's up, Yo, family? What's up? Yo. You was you was you was one of the most look. They in here calling you a snake right yo, they, now. You was one of the yo, most they hated black, hated people <laughs> on the show, bro. Let me let, let me tell you something. A lot of people ask me. I got both y'all in right now. My favorite scene is the two of y'all in that oh, kitchen. Oh man, you guys! It gives me chills to this day. Yeah, every time I see that episode scene. Episode one of season two. Oh, episode man. one of season two. You guys Hell. came with it. I'm yeah. just letting y'all know right now, bro. Y'all came. I'm not gonna lie, if people just tapped into season two and didn't know season one, y'all probably was the reason they went to episode two, bro. That scene <laughs> was fire. <Yeah. laughs> it's, I don't know what I don't know what was on your mind, but y'all killed that scene. Nah, we was in our bag. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Brother, brother, brother uh, up a day before that. I had to do my comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, black, black, real quick, I got a quick question from you. This is coming from me. You actually had the opportunity to basically film with T.I. For those that don't know, T.I. is in season two of Money and Violence. I want to say it's the season finale episode. Mm -hmm. You was on set that day. Yeah. How was that feeling? Seeing like, you know where we started from, but seeing T.I. walk in and do a scene. I ain't going to lie. It, it was major. You know, it was definitely major to like, um, see myself. 
being on set with T. You know, it it, it it was it was amazing. It felt great. At that moment, I knew we made it. <laughs> we ain't make it yet, bro. We got a long way to go. I keep telling you that. We got a long ass journey to go, bro. Guess, 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 guess what they home here with the gym? They don't fall in love with um what comes with the journey. You fall in love with the journey. That was exactly. a good thing. Never focus on the des never focus on the destination. Focus on the journey and you'll get to the destination before you know it, man. Still destination. <laughs> Mo, pe people want to know if TI um freestyled those lines or did you write those lines for TI? Somebody had asked that in here. No, the entire We can't I hear you, Mo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, the entire scene was scripted, but T.I. brought his own flavor to it. You understand what I mean? Um, there were some lines that I had wrote in there that, like, there was uh, there was one line that he was supposed to say that he said he wasn't really feeling, so I let him take the line out. It was, uh, God damn, it was something about a trap queen. So I, I don't even remember it. But um, I, I did script the entire scene, but T.I. definitely brought his own flavor to it. You know, um, he made the scene hilarious. Uh, I loved, I loved the, the, the choices he made because the way that he interpreted the scene, it was like with something so serious going on, it would, it would elevate the scene to bring some comedy to it. So yeah. although the lines were written, I think his delivery helped it so much, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um. I just want to touch base real quick on that saying since we're here. That was one of my further down questions. Um, how did that come about? Like getting Ti on the show, like yo, the the Ti situation um came about from uh, my guy Teddy Altafar and uh, and C Styles. I think it was it, it was it was through. I think it, don't. Don't quote me on this, but I think it was through Shaka Pilgrim, you know, through our connection with Rock Nation. And um, when they presented it to him, you know, he was like, yo, he's with it. And what a lot of people don't know, I'm going to put y'all on to this. T.I. did that scene for absolutely free. Wow. T.I. did that scene for, you know, and, and I have so much respect for him. I mean, because, yo, bro, you looking at this is a guy who did Takers. This is a guy who did so many blockbuster films you understand and yeah. he respected what it was that we were trying to do and he was like yo i'll do this for absolutely free you know all we had to cover was his travel and his hotel that's that's super dope man so for y'all that's a little back end for you guys that don't know you know um this is a uh, back to a uh, fan question life under lover again Looking back on your journey, Mo, thus far, if you could do something different, what would that be and why? Honestly, I'm not a person um, that believes in regrets, right? And that's because because of my, 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 my faith in God and my faith in the universe. I believe that nothing happens to you and everything happens for you. I believe the bad experiences are nothing other than good experiences that you haven't learned from yet. Because once you pinpoint what the lesson is, you're so grateful for having gone through that experience. You know, the past eight to 10 years with Money and Violence has taught me so much. Um, it's taught me so much about people. It's taught me so much about business. Um, it's taught me so much much about gratitude so truthfully as much as i've lost um from this show i have to continue I, for me to say that there's anything that i would change for me would mean that my faith in god isn't as strong as i say my faith in, in god is so there's nothing i would change i take it as it comes um chapla this is gonna be a question for you real quick you, you've been in both industries, the music and the acting industry. For somebody that's on the come up, that's want to go out there and act or want to go out there and do music, what word of advice do you have for them? Um, have faith. Understand that it is, I mean, it's a long haul thing. It's, it's truly a marathon. That's one. And um, hustle. Hustle. One thing I learned and one thing I've learned throughout the years the, the the if you look at the people that's winning it's because they're 
hustle is on point. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you have to hustle because with the acting thing, it's a little different. But especially with music, I mean, you need the funds. If you don't have no money, like, sorry, I, I know how it sounds, but there's literally no point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no point. You might as well just do it as a hobby. But if you're trying to do it and be seen and make it, your hustle have to match what you want. That's just bottom line. I don't give a fuck if you sell t-shirts, um, water bottles with your face on it, whatever, but you have to hustle. True. Um, this is another fan question from, I want to say, Talisha. I got, I, got, I, got a, I got about 10 more minutes, I, um, Ace. I got to get up out of here. Real quick, there's a, a few more. Talisha91 from Kentucky. Mo, have you ever thought about working with other people like from Detroit or any other states to do a movie, like a crossover? Yeah, I mean, listen, bro. I have no problem with collaborations. As a matter of fact, shout out um to my man Mazio, directed by Mazio. That's my dude. I was on. I was. He's he's another um director. You know, filmmaker. I was on the phone with Mazi. You know, uh, earlier this morning. You know what I mean? Um, I speak to a lot of directors, man, and 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 I'm looking forward to the day that we can all collaborate because that's another thing uh, that I want to bring to this New York space. You know, Ace, my model has always been the stage is big enough for all of us. Yep. You understand? Yep. And what I want to bring, and I said this in the Matt Hoffa interview, is I would like to remove from our minds this imaginary thing where just because someone is doing something in the same industry as us, we look at them as competition. The stage is big enough for all of us. If you make a good film, it's not going to stop anyone from watching my good yep. film. You know what I mean? Or my yep. good content, bro. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with us collaborating. We are much stronger together than we are apart. The problem is we think that it's our differences that separate us and not realizing that it's actually our commonalities that bind us and bring us together, man. Like, that's the reality. So the truth is, you know, I would love to collaborate with any and everyone as long as they are bringing something. They, 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 you know what I mean? Like, you have to be contributing something. You want, and when I say contributing something, I'm not even talking about financially. I'm talking about it. If, if you have a script, it has to be something that's, you know, that's of substance, bro. You already know, like with me, although I write these urban tales, although I write, you know, these crime stories about gangsters, there's always an underlying something under it. It's not surface level. You know, I don't, I don't want to do shows where dudes are shooting people and you don't even know why they're shooting people, but they just doing it because it's cool. You understand exactly. what I'm saying? So if we're not teaching, then what are we doing? That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. That's definitely a fact. Real, real, real quick, I need um, Kappa Black. I need you to come down real quick. I got two more people. I only got like eight more minutes with Mo that want to come up. Okay. Um, Real quick, let the people know what y'all doing Yo, real quick. Y'all good vibes, and I appreciate that. Y'all coming up. Y'all already know. Number no. one. Projects to come. I ain't never getting off the MMV boat. <laughs> yo, we five the part. And yo, positive vibes only, man. We happy over here. Girl. Yo, and congr yo, and congratulations to my guy Strife, aka Black. You know what I'm saying? He has a son now, a daughter. You know, the guy that I thought was uh <laughs> he was was the biggest player in the world has settled down. And mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you, bro. I keep telling you that. I love you too, Ace man. I love all of y'all, man. Yo, love you too, bro. You already know that, man. Family for life. Always. Family I love for life. All right, baby. We love. Always. Yo, Hold Cons, on real what quick, up? Mark. Let me see if this, this, um, I think I lost him on the line. Hold on. Hold on. Where is he at? What I do, click off? <laughs> he said what I do, click off. Yeah, yeah, you got to press, um. What I press? Now nah, you can just, you could just close it, the X, in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah, right there. Bam. Boom. Um, I had Keen and BR. I don't know if I lost them. Yo, in the meanwhile, let me, let me just say um, who my favorite characters were. In all honesty, like, all the characters were my favorite because there was just something about each character brought something different to the storyline. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I thought the Miz character was great um, for what the purpose he served. I thought Rafe was great for what he served. I thought Kane was great for what, because, you know, my philosophy is um, no man is your friend, no man is your enemy, every man is your teacher. And for me, that's what these characters were. These characters were literally different teachers 
pictures in the storyline. You know what I mean? Shane taught the audience one thing. This is why when I created these characters, I made them different age for age ranges, right? Because Shane was for the 18 to 20 year olds, the, you know, pretty much the 16 to 20. Kane was for the 20 to 25. Miz was for the 25 to 35. And Rafe was supposed to appeal to the older generation. You understand? Because for me, it was just about speaking in everyone's language, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't teach if you're not speaking in, a, in, in their language. Because the truth is, if I would have created a show about lawyers or a show about doctors, the younger generation wouldn't have really paid attention to it. Um, so I loved every character, man. I loved every character from Chopper to Shane to Miz to Kane. And I mean, I loved Leon too. I loved Leon because Leon, people don't know. I, Ace, you know this. I'm funny as hell, bro. Yeah, and, yeah, and I'm great yeah, at writing yeah. comedy. <laughs> you yeah, understand? Yeah, so yeah. Leon, Leon gave me the opportunity to really flex my, my, my comedy writing. Uncle, Uncle Murder too. Oh, yeah, Uncle yeah, Murder yeah. did a good job oh. on there. Shout out Murder, to Murder. Murder definitely did a Shout good, good job. Main. I see somebody ask, if you're shooting um, the spot, Black, Money and Violence, how can people audition? How can they tap in with Moses for no? Right, listen. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm kind of turned off from dealing with people straight off the street. I'm not going to lie to you. And the reason being is because a lot of these problems arise because people do not understand the business. People do not understand the business of film. People think that there are millions of dollars that are being made when it's not like that. And then what happens is people start looking at you like as if you're doing something underhanded, you know? And because of that, I'm not saying that I'm no longer going to give opportunities to unexperienced actors, but I am leaning towards dealing more with actors, bro, mm -hmm. who understand the business, who who understand that, okay, if a show is on the digital spaces on YouTube, it's not making a million dollars. You know, I've had, you know this, Ace, I've had supporting actors, season one of Money and Violence, when we were on YouTube, say that they expect to be paid $50,000. And I'm like, where's this money coming from? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, went, you, you, you understand where I'm coming you, from? You went, you, went, you went through it. I went through it. You it, and and the reason I went through it is because people don't understand the business. You get so nowhere am I saying that I won't continue to give op opportunities to unexperienced actors. Um, but if we do have any open calls or open auditions, we will let you know via our Instagram pages. And yo, salute to my man King Streets who's in the house. Yeah. King Streets. See what's up? I think I lost you on the line. Real quick, I'm gonna ask you because Mo gotta go in us in a second, but I'm gonna ask you a quick uh, question. Um, for those that don't know, how did you end up on Money and Violence? Oh, uh, uh, I got a call from Do One Night Shooter Shane. Word, he hit me. I was in the crib chilling. Like, yo, yo, you be doing some shit called Money and Violence. You know what I mean, this heard that she could coincide with the music. We put the music on the episode. Blah 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 blah. And you know me, like. I'm like, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> I not like that, you know, coming on board. We had the rose, you know, me and my man Mo, good dude. You know what I'm saying, met him, boom, boom, boom. Gave me the lines and shit, dude. Yo, do this, do that. I'm like, nah, this shit is fire. Cause I never acted. So I'm like, this shit, it was all fire. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't give a fuck how far it went. That shit couldn't went nowhere. That shit was something good, cause I never did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but nah, fuck, nah. Dude, we, we we appreciated your contribution, King, because not only did you come through and shine on screen, but you know you gave us you gave us that music. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? That brought them right. scenes to life. Cause like, and I was I was talking about that earlier, like you know, and Chopper was saying it. King's a beast, bro. <laughs> like when it comes right, to the right. rhymes and them balls. Right, you know right. Uh, um, real quick, so for for those that don't know, King Streets is from Far Rockaway. I wanted to touch on this in in the show, because Money and Violence was so raw, what you guys don't understand, like, we were filming in real time. If the Labor Day parade was happening on Monday, you guys saw it on an episode of Money and Violence yeah, the right, next day. Right, right, like, right. we would film at the... Right. So, I just want to ask King, because we was outside for real. King, we came to you in your hood, middle of the not, night, one in the morning. Not, not only that, nigga, y'all pulled up here. Nigga, we was downtown Brooklyn <laughs> in the cold. <laughs> nigga, we was we was in flat bush in the cold, like nigga. We was outside, nigga. It wasn't no only here, nigga. We was yeah, e everywhere, e ev everywhere. Cause I just want people to know, like, the, 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 the pain we ah, put in. But, but to this day, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, my music, 
me fall, but it's like it's a lot of people who just know me from that. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I could never definitely, just definitely. like I had so many people like what? Like that like, even now, it's a lot of people who didn't see it. And I'm getting mad repost like, no, I didn't even know that was you. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm, crazy. Mm -hmm. My son yeah, is slim. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a revamp. And I want to give you your flowers and a lot of other cast members as well. Because when we were shooting Money Runs, you guys got to know, for those that's just watching, I'm just going to say, nobody knew no. where it was going. Like he uh. said, it was just something he, he wanted to do. So when people took their time out, six hours, five hours, we was traveling there. to Brooklyn, yeah. like that meant a lot to us because... This was on their time, like you know, and Keen was bubbling yeah. at that time. So for him to put things to the side to come out and do that for us, we appreciate that so much. There's so many people that didn't show up for set, so many people that gave me their word, like yo, I'm coming, and then we gotta change the whole screen around because they didn't show up. I know they're kicking themselves now, but it was really, really hard in the beginning to find loyal, dedicated cast members to act out their role. So I appreciate I, you for that, man. 100%. I appreciate y'all for. Allow me to be on that shit, man. That, like I said, man, that shit is just like that's something in life that was a, that's a staple for me. Like, nah, I act, I, I got that off. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, but you know what, King? More than anything, my G, like your performance was amazing and all of that. I appreciate the music, but what I appreciated the most is the energy you brought. You understand? Because right. you know, still to this day, when we when we see each other, it's love. Nah, you get always coming from always. And it's, and I just. I and just told um I just told Ace, I said I just seen this nigga in the yeah, club. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah, and you yeah. know from when you came on set, the energy on the set was always That's love. You understand? Right. Right. It was always love, you know what I mean? So so I wanna I, I wanna thank you for that, my G. Nah, That's nah, real talk. I, I wanna thank y'all for you know what I'm saying y'all you know y'all genuine energy. Welcome to me in. You know what I'm saying? We ain't know each other from a hole in the wall. You know I'm saying, like I said, like you said, years later, you know, we still here, still good dudes and we all still moving and doing what we doing and we blessed to still be here but you know what i'm saying but that shit is you know I, like i said all you can't just it's certain things that's just me i'm very i'm very grateful you know what i'm saying no matter what it is it don't matter like anything i'm in is like but that like right there was a big staple like you know what i'm saying like that money and violence thing like i said even to now with people that didn't see it back then <laughs> now like no like what like but it's good though, man. I just, you know, I always say to myself, my, my, I just always wish I kept it going and got through the fire. You know what I'm saying, cause y'all, and y'all burnt oh, nah, a lot of. Yo, my, my G, it ain't over. I know. It ain't, it ain't over to the fat lady singer. Nah, I already know. Yo, listen, <laughs> you know what I mean? It ain't over. You understand what I'm saying? The journey's still there. Yo, bro, as long as we still breathing, it ain't nah, over. That's Trust that's and believe, that's cause that's that's, that's that's what the two B releases for. You understand what I'm saying? Let's, let's bring the energy back and let's get this thing rolling. Let's go, man. Yo, oh, can appreciate y'all, man. Can we look forward to some Strizzy soundtrack music on the new work? Y'all can mm. get whatever. Yo, listen, mm. man. Listen. I got a million songs <laughs> in this hard drive. Y'all can, can cut it in the studio and pick up yourself. That's, that's what I want to hear. I can cut it in the Y'all can pull up to the studio and pick up yourself. That's that's, that's what I want to hear. Whatever, whatever y'all need man. from me. It's a hundred percent. I'm all in, man. Y'all just pull up like King. We want this, this, and this song. Y'all can have it. Let's do it. No I, more love. Love y'all. I love y'all. See y'all. How we rap, man? I'm ready. Hit me. All right, bro. All right. So Mo, I know you gotta yeah, I gotta go. Make, Real move. quick, man. Um, just tell the people one last time for those that's just checking in, what you about to, what you got going on, the whole two B money and violence, your exit. Yeah, let's you get know, it. Um, once again, the plan is, you know, get money and violence. The number one on Tubi right now, I believe we're number one in crime dramas, most popular drama, crime TV. Uh, but we need to be number one overall, you know. So um, I thank y'all so much for the support in the last couple of the last few weeks. Um, you guys have really, really like helped us do some unprecedented things on there. You know, we we got onto these lists. I mean, in days, you know what I'm saying, which is unprecedented. That doesn't necessarily happen. Um, so. I just ask that y'all, you know, keep believing in us. Um, keep giving us that love and support. We appreciate y'all. We're doing everything in our power to bring y'all that season three that y'all been asking for. Um, and just stay above the noise, man. You know what I mean? The love is reciprocated. And Trust real, and believe. We love y'all the same way y'all love us. Real quick before you leave, guys. Also, Mo also has a podcast called Brooklyn Boys Podcast that's on YouTube. If oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out, check out Brooklyn Boys Radio. On YouTube, yes. go check out Brooklyn Boys Radio. You know what I'm saying? Um, Brooklyn Boys Radio is, I like to call it a more 
mature version of hip hop. Um, I say a little more mature version simply because I, I, I feel like hip hop is our biggest tool. You know what I mean? Um, we're lagging behind. Our communities are lagging behind. And I think that hip hop is our biggest tool. And uh, I think hip hop needs to mature. You know what I mean? Because hip hop is what can help us fix a lot of things that are, that are so messed up because hip hop has so much influence. So I think hip hop is time. It's time for it to grow up. So Brooklyn Boys Radio is a hip hop conversation, but a lot more mature. You know what I mean? So check Brooklyn Boys Radio on YouTube. That's Brooklyn Boys Radio. As a matter of fact, um, go follow the Brooklyn Boys Radio Instagram and you can click the link. We, we're at episode 50 right now. Like we got 50 episodes. So y'all can go backtrack, check out from episode one. Great conversation. Um, and just check it Don't out. Answer man. that question. Talk. Don't answer that question, but that's a real good question. What? On the next episode of Brooklyn Boys Radio, will you be returning as Rafe on season three? I need you to remember that I question remember for, for him. He just, Yo, all right. I want me to be honest with you, like I told you, I hate acting. And I'm going to just say this. If there's anyone that I think could play Rafe on Money and Violence, I think it's my man Rayon Lawrence who played K-9 on BMF. The only reason I'm like, ah, is because, you know, BMF power, very similar. But I don't know, man. My man Rayon Lawrence, I think Rayon would kill that. Shout <laughs> out to everybody that tuned in. This is um, episode one of News with Ace, raw conversations with real people. If you're just tuning in, Make sure you follow me, News with Ace, Ace General. I, I give you guys updates every day. Thank you, Mo, for Yo, coming th out. Thank, thank you, you for everybody having me, for tuning Ace. In. Love always, my G. And I'm love, gonna save love this to everybody live. out there who, t who tuned in, man. Love to everybody that loves me. Yo, Mo, if, if you want to watch the news, who do you watch? I watch News with Ace. 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 Get me out of here, y'all. Later.